Hello Booktube, it's Andrea and I'm here today to bring you my September wrap up and an October TBR. What? A TBR? An October TBR? Andrea, you never do TBRs because you like to choose what you're reading as you're reading it. This is true. However, I only completed six books in September so I wanted to challenge myself and getting very, very close to the end of my Goodreads challenge and I want to see if I can finish it. So I thought I'd push myself. So. I had to put the books down because I've got nothing to put them on so I'm going to be bending up and down so we do apologise. So let's get on to the books I read in September. So I read The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell or rather I actually finished The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. It took me a while. Um, it's not that I didn't enjoy it, I thought it was a very good story, I just thought it was very odd. Very, very, very odd. And it took me a while to get through it. But yes, I did enjoy it. It was an interesting read, a story about Holly and her life and how her life impacts the world really and yeah odd David Mitchell good though next I also read two Terry Pratchett books in September I'm just going to get them in the right order the first one was Reaper Man which basically is the story of death death is being displaced and replaced we don't know by who yet, um, because the auditors who audit reality have decided he's become too real and we can't have that and he's become too human and too sympathetic. So they basically make him mortal in a way. He's still bones but he gets his own lifetime and he goes off to help this woman on a farm and it's about what happens when there's nobody to actually usher the souls of the dead into the afterlife and how that causes problems with uh, reality. There's too much life force going around. I also read Witches Abroad, which is obviously a witch's story. My favourite characters are Nanny Og, Granny Weatherwax and Magrat. And in this book they have to fight a strange enemy who is actually Granny Weatherwax uh, sister Lilith, who is a self-styled fairy godmother and makes everybody dream come true or what she thinks are everybody's dream come true every story has to have a happy ending whereas granny just thinks that stories should have endings it's what we make of them that's important so they travel to Genoa to uh fight Lily and make sure that Embers or Cinders as it's based on does not go to the ball it's in this book that Grebo first gets transported and changed into a human, yay, which is always fun. And we meet the Discworld's shortest number one lover, Casanunda. I love the witches, I'm gonna say that. I read, <clears throat> I finished, Stephen King's Wolves of the Cala. As you can see, this is a huge book. This is book five in the Dark Tower series. You could build bricks out of Stephen, you could build houses out of Stephen King's books, they're such bricks, really. I mean, oh, I love them, don't get me wrong, I love Stephen King and I, I'm really enjoying this series, but I'll be glad when it gets to the end, I'm not gonna lie. I want to know what happens, I want him to reach the Dark Tower and do whatever it is he's got to do. Um, I read One Fluffy Romance this month, which was the Doris Day Vintage Film Club by Fiona Harper. So this tells the story of Claire Bixby, who is a Doris Day fan and runs a film club where they watch a Doris Day film a week. She meets um, a man named Nick, who is a client, but he's also her downstairs neighbour who's an irritant and it kind of mirror ugh, parallels the plot of Pillow Talk in the sense that he pretends to be somebody else so he can take her out and get to know her. Um, while she's still feuding with him as her downstairs neighbour. Instead of uh, sharing a phone line, they communicate by emails and notes, so it was okay. It wasn't a bad story. I quite enjoyed that one. And the sixth and my most favourite book of the month <gasps> is so heavy, and that is, of course, The Essential Marilyn Milton H. Green 50 Sessions, compiled by Josh Green. Obviously, we did an unboxing this and a flip through. Not a full flip through because I want you to buy the book because it's awesome. And uh, yeah, so that was my favourite book of the month. I loved it. It's such a beautiful book. It's also really heavy and I'm going to put it down. Oh, it really is quite a heavy book. Not a good thing to be lifting. Right. 
So those are the six books that I read in September, so I'm going to move on to what I am currently reading and what I want to read in October. We're in October. So I'm currently reading still, oh that's going to fall, Agatha Christie's Complete Secret Notebooks, Stories and Secrets of Murder in the Making. I haven't picked this up for a, a while. I'm only a tiny little bit way through it. I'm not expecting to finish this in October, but I will have a bit of a read through it to see what I can do. I'm also currently reading this one, which is Marilyn Monroe Unveiled a Family History by Jason Edward Kennedy and Jennifer Jean Miller. This isn't so much about Marilyn as about her family on her mother's mother's side, the Hogan family. Um, so far it's really interesting, uh, actually. But like I said, it's more about her family than Marilyn, so. But yeah, I'm going to try and finish that one this month. I'm also reading Valentino Speaks, The Wit and Wisdom, or The Wisdom of Rudolph Valentino, Q's Views from the Other Side by Wayne Vincent Hartford. Wayne Vincent Hartford claims to have received messages from Valentino in the afterlife and has written them down into this book. There is a sequel, I have that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's very hard to know whether or not Valentino spoke in this way because there are no recordings known to exist of Valentino actually just speaking. There are a couple of uh, recordings of him singing, but not speaking. But uh, it's quite interesting to see what uh, they say Valentino would have thought of the world um, and what we should be doing. But yeah, these are just ones I'm reading. This isn't going on to my what I want to read this month. I know. So I'm also currently reading Song of Susanna by King Stephen King, which is the sixth book in the Dark Tower. I am just over halfway through this, so it's not going to take me too much longer. I've been taking this to work and read it on my lunch break as well, so hopefully that's going to help. And finally, I'm also reading Terry Pratchett's Small Gods. So this tells the story of the god Om and his one believer brother, who is the eighth prophet. Basically, Om has become a very small god. He is now t manifested in the shape and size and of a, t a tortoise because nobody believes him anymore. They just believe in, they don't even believe in the teachings of the church. They're just afraid of it. Um, but Brother actually believes and it's about trying to get Om back to his rightful position as the great god Om, which they do by the end, by the way. I know. It's not spoiling it. So those are the books that I want to, uh, that I'm currently reading that I want to either make good headway with in the sense of Agatha Christie or finish with regards to the other ones that are on the go. There are a few books that I've set myself to try and read this month and the reason I'm doing the challenge is A because I only read six books last month, B I'm on holiday next week so I should get a chance to read some even if it's not these ones. Oh, one of them will be. And C I am only 17 books off of finishing my Goodreads challenge, so I want to see if I can either do that this month or get very close to it, so that next month and December I can just read and I'll have done it, and that'll be exciting. Yay! So, on my TBR pile for October is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince by J.K. Rowling. Want to read that this month. Something else I've been wanting to pick up for quite a long time is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. It's been staring at me from my TBR pile for a long time. I'm thinking, I'm going to read that this month. I'm going to read that this month. October is the month. The book I will be taking on holiday with me is The Dark Tower by Stephen King. Book eight, book seven, book seven. In the Dark Tower series. I mean, there is a, a dark, it tells me that there's eight here. Oh, because the wind through the keyhole. Yeah, it doesn't count. Um, which is book seven and the final book in the series. Like I said, there is another book called The Wind Through the Keyhole, which is a Stark Dark Tower story. And this takes place between the books Wizard and Glass and Wolves of the Calla. But I haven't read that because it's not technically. It doesn't technically, but it does. So, As obviously this is part of Missy, the binge readers. Binge readers? Yeah. Uh, Stephen Kingathon. I will definitely be doing this so I can move on to the next um, book in November, which is Firestarter. So that one's going to Cornwall with me. I also want to get on to Tales of the Peculiar by Ransom Riggs. I've read the first three and I want to read the stories. I think they'll be quite easy to read and enjoyable. And I do love this hardback. It's lovely. 
I want to read book one in the Nikki French uh, series, Blue Monday, A Day for Murder. There's one every day, so there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday came out this year. I don't have Saturday though. So I want to try and read this. I have read this. This is my reread for the month. Every month I'm going to reread one book. This is the one. Other than the Terry Pratchett's, they don't count. A while ago you would have seen this book on this channel, this is The Wizard of Oz. Now I've read The Wizard of Oz but it also has two other um, Oz stories in here which is The Emerald City of Oz and Glinda of Oz and I want to try and read one or both of those stories this month. Along with Five Go Off to Camp by Enid Blyton. God, I love Enid. Uh, just because it's going to be a quick read. I also have on this month's pile TJ Clune's The Lightning Struck Heart. This has been recommended to me over and over again by my friend Julie. She's saying you must read it, you must read it, it's hysterical. So I might pop this one in my suitcase as well in case I finish The Dark Tower or I get a bit bored with it and need to have uh, something a bit funny. Two more on this list and then we'll pick one from the, TG, the TBR jar. I can't even speak today. Next one is the second one in the Cardiff Bay Investigation series by Winnie Lee, which is the Coopersfield Murder. I like these because obviously Cardiff's only along the road, it's a few miles away, so I know a lot of these places, so it's always good to say, well, I know where that is. Oh, I've been there. I like that. Oh, yeah. And finally, um, the one I want to read and it's on the list for this month is The Shakespeare Curse by J.L. Carroll. I bought this last October in Hale Y from the Murder Bookshop or Murder and Mayhem. And I thought I'd pick this one up and give that a go because why not a bit of murder and a bit of Shakespeare? Oh, it won't go. It's got to be done. So I know I've rattled through those books quite quickly. Those are the ones that I want to try and read this month. If you have read any of those, do leave me some comments down below. And let me know what you thought. We didn't do this last month. I forgot. But then it did take me two months to read The Bone Clock. So, which is the one I picked out last time. No, I didn't. I took it off my other TBR pile. I don't know anymore. Anyway, it still took me two months to read it. We're going to have a pick. We'll be putting some more in here at some point. To mix it up a bit. I'm going to go. I hope it's, it's going to be something huge now. You guarantee it. I'm going to pick this one from the bottom. It's pink. Let me just put the lid back on because knowing me, I will drop it every bit, everywhere. Excuse me, sniffing. I have got a bit of cold. And this one is, oh my god, it's a huge book. It's absolutely massive. It's like a thousand pages. It is Can't Buy Me Love, The Beatles, Britain and America. So it's about The Beatles. It will be quite interesting. It is a massive book, mind. It is about a thousand pages, if not bigger. But although I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to finish it this month, I'm going to certainly start it when I get back from holidays. So <laughs> I knew it was going to be a big one. <laughs> But I can at least get it started, that's the main thing, isn't it? <laughs> Those are the books that I read in September that I'm hoping to read or get part way through in October. I'm not going to do Spookathon this year, I'm just more focused on finishing my Goodreads challenge. I'm trying to get my TBR down a little bit because I've got so many books on it. Um, as you know, in, in September I bought one book. It's, it's, uh, yeah, I've already bought three this month. But one of those was the Stephen King one to take on holiday because is part of the readathon. Two others weren't there, they were just, oh god, are they? It's not good to say. It's got to slow down because obviously, if you know me and we are friends on Facebook, you would know that I am expecting a baby in February, so obviously I won't be able to buy as many books for a bit. I am hoping I'll be able to read a bit or listen to audiobooks. That's my plan, but we'll see. So that's it from now. Like I said, if you if you enjoyed this video, like, comment, share, subscribe, leave me a comment about any of the books if you've read them. Give me some recommendations. I can put them on my Christmas wish list. That's what they're for. And I will see you very, very soon with another bookish video. Bye everybody!